Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about how do I wash and sterilize the pieces of equipment that come with my pump. So I'm going to be talking to you specifically about the Medela and the Amida hospital grade pumps, but this will apply to any pump that you are using at home. Hello there, my name is Maria. I am the owner and founder of the New Mummy Company and I'm delighted to be able to bring you lots of information, hints and tips around your pregnancy and parenting journey. So stay tuned for lots of great videos but remember we do want to hear from you in terms of content and what you would like to hear from us. So first things first, before I start any baby related activity, I'm going to wash my hands. Now I have already washed my hands and so we're going to get started. But just a reminder, it's always a really great idea to wash your hands before you do anything, even when you're going to be washing equipment because we want to make sure that your hands are clean because otherwise we're not actually cleaning everything to the best of its ability. So we're going to start off, first of all, I have the Amida parts here. Now I've disconnected this from the pump already, but I still have the tubing and the caps. The caps and the tubing do not need to be washed, so I'm going to remove those and I'm going to place them over to the side. Now when I've removed the caps, I have actually taken the membranes out. So I'm going to take the membranes and I'm going to drop them into the hot soapy water, but the caps and the tubing I am going to place to the side because these do not need to be washed. And so to dismantle everything here, I'm screwing the bottles off the bottom. I am taking the little valve on the inside, pulling this guy off and popping him in there and the same with the breast shield. Taking the bottle off, taking the valve off and popping everything in here. So that's everything to do with the Amida pump taken off. Now all of the Amida pumps, they all work the same in that all of their tubing and all of their caps and all of their bottles are all the same. So no matter which pump you have, they're all going to look like that. So that's really helpful. If you're using a Medela pump, you're going to have slightly different pieces of equipment, but again, same sort of story in that we're not going to be washing the tubing. So here I have the Medela Symphony, the bottles are stored in the back. Now obviously there's no milk in any of these today, but we're going to remove the tubing by removing it out the back of the breast shields, the top of the bottles, and then the pump can be put aside because we do not need to wash anything that is contained within the pump, the tubing, or anything like that. So to dismantle the Medela parts, we take the front of the breast shield off, pop that in the water, take the rest off, and then this is where you have to be careful. We want to turn and pull the valve off but we also want to make sure that we are removing the white membrane. And the reason for that is because this is where the milk comes out and where the milk comes out, obviously it's very important to make sure that that's squeaky clean. So that goes in, that goes in, and that goes in, and the bottle. Again, turn, unscrew the bottle, turn the valve, remove gently, the white membrane so that that's off and then this can be washed and then everything is taken apart so everything is apart. So here I have a bowl of warm soapy water. I'm just going to make sure everything is submerged. Once everything is submerged you can let it soak for a moment or two just to let everything dissolve, let the warm water do its thing because your breast milk is quite fatty. We want it to be fatty and as a result there is some fat marks that will um, be adhering to the inside of the bottle. So warm sudsy water is a great way to make sure that they can soak for a few minutes and then get really clean. Today I am using Dapple. This is a really great product in terms of washing your breastfeeding equipment, but it's also really great at removing those fat stains. It's a very great product that we love here at the New Mummy Company, but if you just have a regular dish soap, um, we love the lemonade products, so that can be another alternative for you in terms of a regular dish soap if you don't have a specific bottle washing uh, dish soap at hand. 
In terms of washing your bottles and the pump parts, you can use any bottle brush that's on the market. Here I have Munchkin and Philips. We do recommend that you use a specific bottle brush simply because any brush that you're using to wash your dishes with will have quite a lot of grease, some dirt, some debris, and maybe just not as hygienic as we would like it to be specifically for a newborn baby. So a bottle brush is a great way to be able to make sure that you can really get into those parts and make sure that everything is properly clean. So um, the first thing that comes to hand is a brush shield. So I'm going to make sure that the bottle brush is wet and soapy and then I'm just going to gently squeeze so that it comes in here and is able to get through because I want to hear that hear that squeak. I want to make sure that we hear that squeak that means that it's clean and so when I am comfortable that I have removed all of the milky residue because if it's sat for any length of time, it can get dried in. So I want to make sure that it's all completely clean. And so when I look at it, it's clean. Then I'm going to place it into a bowl of cold water. So I have the bowl here. And the reason for the, the cold water is I want to remove any of the dish soap that's actually on any of the pieces that I'm washing. So we can end up making quite a bit of a splash, but that's okay. So we want to make sure that everything is squeaky clean. We want to get into all the corners. Not that there's corners on a bottle, but you know what I mean. I want to make sure that I get into all of the corners, all of the, all of the parts that could be harboring any residue, any dried milk, especially up around these ring areas. And again, you just want to examine it to make sure that you feel that it's clean. And again, we're going to pop that in there. And so the other piece that I'm going to wash is the valve and the membrane. Now on the Munchkin and again on the Philips, there is a little brush or a little um, tailored piece at the end that is designed to get into those small nooks and crannies. And here you can see that I'm getting in here. And the reason for this is because, as I said, the milk is going to flow out through here. And we want to make sure that we're not leaving any residue of any milk in here. So we want to make sure that that gets a good clean. And again, once I feel that it's clean, I'm going to pop that in there. And then I'm going to fish around. Here we have, this is the duck bill or the valve from the Amida pump. And so with this guy, again, I wanna do exactly the same thing. I wanna get in there to make sure that there's no residue because this, just like the Medela one, this is where the milk drops through and comes out here. So we wanna make sure that we've washed it correctly and that there's no dried milk because dried milk can lead to bacteria growing or any mold. And again, that could make your baby very sick. So once that's clean, I want to get that in there. And then the other thing I want to fish for is the membrane from the Medela one. So this little guy, he's very tiny. He can appear insignificant. You kind of think he's not so important. He's very important because without him, the suction is going to disappear on your pump. So you want to make sure at all times that this guy looks its best so it's not puckered or torn or damaged because that can affect the suction on your pump. But you also want to make sure that when you're washing that you get into all of the curves and creases in the membrane without damaging it. Because like I said, if it's puckered or torn or damaged or overly stretched, it's not going to give you the suction. So we wanna make sure that it's clean. And once it's clean, we're gonna pop it in there. And then the only other thing to really show you is, here it is, <laughs> it's like playing fish, uh, is the membrane. So I've got lots of water in here. And here I'm just rinsing through. Now there really shouldn't be an awful lot of milk that comes in contact with the membrane if it's working correctly but just to be on the safe side we are going to make sure that it is clean. So I'm not going to wash everything today obviously I'm just going to pop those in there. I'm going to place this to the side. Now you can see that I have these items here that are sitting in the cold water you can put them under a running tap or it's more economical and environmentally friendly just to put them in a bowl of, of clean water. 
and then we're just going to make sure that everything has been submerged and rinsed correctly and once all of the dish soap is removed from the equipment then we can move into our sterilization. So for sterilization today I'm going to show you two alternatives both are microwave options but you can obviously also use the boiling method which is where you put all of the equipment on your stovetop and you put it into boiling water for anything between 10 to 20 minutes. Now just make sure that you set a timer you don't want to forget those boiling pieces in there. If anything happens everything could be a fire hazard or they could end up melting if the water boils away. So set a timer. If you think that you need to be able to have that flexibility to be able to forget about it then you have the option of a microwave sterilization or a steam sterilization. Now steam sterilization is not recommended by certain companies with regards to their breast pump equipment so just make sure that you read the manufacturer's warranty you don't want to invalidate any of your warranties. So here I have a regular microwave steam sterilizer and I also have a microwave, there it goes, everything on the floor, a microwave steam sterilizing bag. And so the bag, this is a Medela bag, and this can be actually be used 20 times. And it has on the back for you to be able to mark it when you've used it. So you simply open it up like a Ziploc and you follow the instructions where that are written on the back where you put the items in along with the water and I believe it's 60 mils yes 60 mils of water and then you put it on for 1.5 minutes 3 minutes or 5 minutes depending on the wattage of your microwave it has a steam vent on the side here so just be careful to make sure that that is open so that the steam can escape as it's doing its job in the microwave and then just let everything cool before you take it out because again you don't want to get burnt and then today I'm going to show you the microwave steam sterilizing option so again you'll follow the instructions based on what they are for your particular microwave sterilizing unit usually between 60 and 90 mils maybe up to 100 mils will go into the base and then you put everything into the unit like so everything going upside down so that the steam can rise and you place everything in here upside down in any way that it fits but just making sure that everything is upside down and then place the lid on the top and then pop it into the microwave for however long is recommended on the instructions that comes with your manual. Be careful when you take it out because again it can be very warm and the alternative being the steam sterilizer unit which stands on your countertop and you use that in the same way you pour the designated amount of water in press the button and it will steam sterilize and just make sure that everything is turned upside down so the steam can rise up into it. And that is it for today. This has been a lot of fun for me to make. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. We want to make sure that you get the best for you and your baby. If you've liked today's video, please do give us a thumbs up. We would love to hear your comments and stick around for another video, which will be coming out Thursday at 11 a.m. And we hope that you'll be back to check out that video next time. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.